I would like to speak also today about spiritual warfare and the the suffering that comes upon people. Um, I have experienced a lot of pressure on me. I can't tell you my trials, and I can't. I don't know your trials. And it seems like everything is a struggle all the time. Frustration everywhere I go. And you're like, where, where is God in all this? Why isn't He answering my prayers? Why isn't, um, you know, why, why has He let me fall into all of these hardships, problems, whatever they are? And we all have them. And it's very difficult sometimes when things are going haywire to rest in Him. And sometimes I think He allows this to happen. He allows us to get in a tizzy for a while until we understand that he is still there he is still in control and he knows and has ordained <laughs> and have you forgiven you mad at God because he won't give you what you want or he's taken something away and let me tell you something a lot of people have fallen out with God because they didn't have their prayers answered or something terrible happened in their life well you don't know what eternity is First of all. Second of all, you don't know the reasons. I can say that God is a just God, but God does things that we wouldn't agree with. That doesn't make him any less God or any less have any less wisdom. Whatever suffering may have happened, you may find out in the end that the people that you thought didn't know God and went to hell are in heaven. Now, I don't know. I can't speak for God. And I can't speak for... Um, for how you feel when you have terrible loss and you can be angry at God. The problem is, is that that's not letting God be God. God is a fearful God. God is an awesome God. And God is a righteous God. And God has every right to judge the earth. And if he decides to save some people, that means he's a compassionate God. Does he decide to forgive and save everybody? Well, in his wisdom, he hasn't chosen to do that. And yet I can still let him have his place because he, his wisdom is higher than my wisdom. There are many people that say that Jesus Christ died for everybody's sins in the world. All they have to do is choose him. But many people choose him and walk away from him. And the problem with this is this, that anybody who says that they can get to heaven by their own choice is really taking the power of Christ and and making it a choice that that they have that they're doing they're finding their salvation by their own will and so well, what's wrong with free will well it's a trap because if you can choose God then you can unchoose God and walk away from God so if Satan has the power to deceive you and you're trying to hold on to God by your own power and not the power of the Holy Spirit and saying, well, I, mean, I am I'm asking God, that's the Holy Spirit. No. You see, that would be your ability to ask God to give you the strength to persevere to the end. That's not God making and saving you through and through without you even asking him. But any asking that you do is prompted by his power. And his power holds you and makes you persevere unto the end. Arminianism is actually works salvation. It isn't as bad as Calvinist works salvation, which is terrible. But the end result of Arminianism is not trusting in God and not being able to rest in God making yourself try to keep yourself in the kingdom by your own choice. And this is the, that's, that's the problem. That, that view takes the gospel out of the gospel. It is not good news if I can choose God, but I can be deceived by Satan to unchoose him. The only way that I choose God is that Satan can't deceive me because the Holy Spirit has opened up my eyes, and in this way I 
accept Christ. So that's why if, if you're Arminian and you're upset with me because I'm not Arminian, and you think that I'm a Lordship Calvinist, which I'm not, uh, that's why I can understand why being uh, believing that in choice actually makes it up to you to hold yourself into God into God's kingdom when you are by your own sinful nature and by the power of of the deceiver. Uh, unable to hold yourself in God. You will be deceived every time without the, the eye-opening power of the Holy Spirit. Now there's all these arguments that, well, God opens up your eyes and then you choose him after he, cho he opens up your eyes. Again, I'd have to say, well, then that's not the power of God holding you in his hand. That's the power of you choosing, which is deceived. Now let me take the other uh, idea here that if you don't choose God, or if you, if you think that you choose God, okay, based on the idea that, you've, that you have a choice, right? But you've heard the gospel and you've decided to reject it. I would have to say that the Holy Spirit did not give you the gospel then. Because you see, if you had an informed decision, which one would you take? Hmm? If you really knew that Jesus really existed and there was a possibility for eternal life with him and you chose death, then you don't understand the gospel. So the gospel was not presented to you by the Holy Spirit. So your eyes could not have been opened because it's like this. Would you rather die or would you rather live forever in happiness? Hmm. Um. So, so these are the, some of the things that are wrong with our Arminian point of view. So I'm bringing these things out because, you see, I'm trying to show you that, there ha that, that the gospel must, God must be God and the gospel must be the gospel. If you believe in your own ability to hold yourself in God, then you can't appreciate God because you can't know whether or not God gave you salvation or not. You could say, oh, well, God died for me, but I've got to pay a certain amount. I've got to make sure that I I'm keep myself in the kingdom. Well, then, that, then that's not God paying for you. And that's not God keeping you. So that can cause work salvation, just like the Lordship Calvinist, which basically believes the same thing. The Lordship Calvinist does not believe in true Calvinism. The Lordship Calvinist believes that God has chosen me from the beginning, but I have to make sure that I have to do everything I, I, I possibly can do do to make sure that I'm chosen, leading you to the same conclusion that you can't trust in Christ for your salvation. You must trust in yourself. So honestly, the whole argument between the Calvinist and the Arminian is ridiculous because you both believe, in essence, the same thing. Although the Arminian doesn't take it that far, and, 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 and their, their Christianity is, I think, much better than, than, than the Calvinist, the, the Lordship Calvinist side of it, because they're, they're nuts. Okay? But if you look at the theology on its face, neither one of them are the gospel. Because, you see, if the gospel has to do with you, then you can't appreciate. And you, how can I love God? If I don't know if he saved me. Oh, I praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, I, that I have a chance to get to heaven. But I know that I'll blow it because I know my own sinful nature. I don't know that I'll make it to the end. I, I, I don't know. What does, what does this do? It puts you in chains, ladies and gentlemen. The chains of not being broken because you don't believe in the Christ. So both ideas, even though you, you don't understand them both, are antichrist. Although that's not the way you practice it because you believe in salvation, you believe in all this kind of stuff. But you have to understand where that theology leads. It leads to slavery under the law because then it leads to you not being able to love God because he, he might love you first. You have a chance to get to heaven. All you have to do is follow. He said, follow me. But you see, it is God who works in you both to will and to do.
Why? Because if God is not working within you both to will and to do, then it's your choice and you will be deceived and lose heaven. And then you'll be always not be able to trust God because you don't know whether he saved you or not. But the gospel that gives you freedom tells you you're saved no matter what. And you're like, you mean it, the burden's off my back? You mean you saved me in spite of myself? No matter what I do, I'm saved? See that? Oh my God, thank you. Thank you. Thank, that's good news. Thank you. Take care.